she wants to be her but also wants to be with her but also wants to be with her husband as her <laughs> and also wants to be both both of them Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's going to be my May reading wrap up. This has been my worst reading month in a long while. I've just been in such a reading slump. I was kind of got into the reading slump in April and it just continued on the whole of this month. And I'm kind of blaming it on the fact that I got really into Animal Crossing again. I started a new island. Kind of been losing steam with it now. So I'm hoping I can get back into my reading routine properly again soon. But I've just been waking up in the morning and playing Animal Crossing rather than reading, which is what I usually did before I started the day. And it's making me feel disappointed in myself, which is silly. But I just, there's so many books that I want to read that are on my TBR but I'm just not getting through the books that I'm reading fast enough to get to the ones that I really want to read which sounds so silly because I'm trying to mood read as well. I guess like I am picking up books that I want to read and then getting about 25% through and being like I'm bored of this now, I need something fresh but I do struggle with DNFing books as I've talked about in the past. It gives me a guilty feeling when it shouldn't. That being said, I did DNF a book this month, but it's so interesting because it genuinely is just that I'm in a reading slump because I'm looking back at the books that I've read this month and I've not hated any of them. Even the one that I DNF'd, it wasn't me hating it by any means. I just got tired of it and it wasn't anything to do with the book. It was just the mood I was in. So anyway, let's get into it. I'll talk through what happened. Let's start off with the book I DNF'd so we're not ending with that and ending on a bit of a negative note. The book that I DNF'd was Phoenix Unbound which is the first book in the Fallen Empire series by Grace Draven. This is a romancy book that I saw Reagan from Peru's project talking about. She loved it. I really liked the sound of it. I really wanted to read a true romancy book. I tried this I got, I want to say about just under halfway through, I can't fully remember, and I just wasn't feeling it. The writing was good, the characters were good, the story was good, I liked the whole concept, I loved the world building. I could have really enjoyed this if I was in the right mindset, but just didn't line up with how I was feeling in that moment, I don't think, which is why I just decided to DNF it. Honestly, I could say the same about a lot of the other books I read this month. I could have DNF'd them just because of those reasons, nothing because of the books. But because I'd already DNF'd this book this month, I was like fighting through a lot of them because I was like, I can't just keep DNFing books, even though I can. I can, I'm just not letting myself. Phoenix Unbound is about a world that is controlled by this empire which demands that every village sends a woman every year to be sacrificed and burn at the stake basically but our main character Gilleen she has the magical ability to alter her appearance and control fire which is very convenient for the purposes of <laughs> the plot because her village every year sends her to be burnt at the stake but she is able to return every year because she can escape the fire without being hurt. But this one year, a man called Azarian, who is a gladiator, spots Galene and manages to see through her disguise and realises that it's the same woman that he's seen in previous years. And he forces her to set him free and then kidnaps her to take her back to his village where he was supposed to be a leader a prince among the village, I guess, which was stolen from him by his uncle, maybe? Some family member who wanted rid of him and he wants to use Galeen's power to regain his position in his village. Like I say, I DNF'd this but it wasn't anything to do with the book's fault. I wouldn't even say like it was boring but it was definitely a case of it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Now let's go on to the books that I did finish and did enjoy. So actually the month started out really strong because I had a four star followed by a five star. My first read of the month was Wife of the Gods, which I gave four stars. This is a book by Quay Quarty and is the first book in a detective series which follows Detective Darko Dawson and is set in Ghana. I read this for the Storygraph Reads the World Challenge, so this ticked off my Ghana country and I loved it. It was a proper kind of hard-boiled detective detective book I think. Like the detective Darko Dawson is very much, I'd say a more modernized version of the hardball detective. He 
is much more respectful of women but there are like glimmers throughout the book of him kind of like objectifying women. He's a married man, he has moments of attraction to other women and like will briefly think about acting on these attractions but he's also a very loving husband, he has good morals and good intentions. In this book Dawson, who works in the city, has to go investigate the murder of a young woman in a small village town called Kitanu, a village where Dawson's aunt and uncle actually live and he has memories of visiting them when he's a childhood which play a big part in the plot of this story. While he's investigating the murder of this woman who was a young medical student working to spread awareness about AIDS, he's pulled into the world of fetish priests which practice very old values where women are given to them to become their wives. Their title is Trokosi or Wives of the Gods. And so a big part of this book is the clash between Dawson's modern values and city life with this small village's very questionable practices. I really like this book a lot. It's really given me an insight into this culture that I have very little knowledge on. And I thought the themes throughout were very very interesting like one of the prevailing one is obviously this conflict between modern practice and traditional practices especially in terms of medicine which affects Dawson's own personal life very heavily because his son is suffering from a very serious I think it's a brain condition and him and his wife are trying to save up the money to get him the medical treatment he needs but his wife's mother who believes in more traditional methods is convinced that taking the son to a more spiritual healer will work just as well. We've also got Dawson's past experience in Katanu as a boy coming into play in the future plot in a really satisfying way. I will say the way it's written, obviously it's a detective story but I didn't think that the mystery was so much twisty and turny as a lot of people would expect from a mystery. You're kind of made to suspect a number of people for various reasons, but I found that there was one person that we were being led to believe it was them from quite early on and it did end up being this person. So I guess it's kind of predictable in that way, but I thought it was so well written and the ending was so satisfying that I didn't mind that so much. I would definitely recommend, I really, really enjoyed it. Next up was a five star read and it'll come as no surprise that this was Funny Story by Emily Henry. I've never not given an Emily Henry book a five stars. She's definitely one of my favourite authors. She writes the perfect romances that balance strong characters and interesting plots and good spicy tension romances without relying too much on the actual spice of it. Funny Story follows the relationship between Daphne and Miles who were both broken up with by their partners Peter and Petra who were old best friends and end up together. Daphne had moved with Peter to his hometown to be with him because they were engaged so when they break up she's basically forced out of her home and she ends up moving in with Miles just out of convenience. When they both get invitations for Peter and Petra's wedding they both come up with the idea to pretend that they are now dating each other. This leads to some shenanigans. I thought this was quite different from from Emily Henry's other books in a really refreshing way. Miles isn't like the other heroes in her books. I think he's the most different from the other heroes that Emily Henry has written in the sense that he has some very real flaws that kind of get in the way of his relationship with Daphne. Whereas I feel like in the other Emily Henry books it's much more of a focus on the woman overcoming something. I think in this book it was much more balanced between the characters of Daphne and Miles. They both had to work through something, they were both in difficult positions in their lives, very similar positions as well, which what is what they connect over. And I thought that was just really refreshing. I also loved Miles. I found him very attractive and very endearing. Daphne was great too. I liked that she was a character who kind of found it hard to make friends and connect with people and feeling very lost in this new place where she thought she was going to have a new life and is now suddenly abandoned there. I liked her finding a new friend in her co-worker. I liked her difficult relationship with her dad and seeing how that has affected her life. I just really really loved this book. I don't know where I'd rate it in the Emily Henry books. I love book lovers so much. I've only read Emily Henry's books each once and I think I can't make a definitive list until I read them all again 
which might be a project this summer maybe. Uh, Emily Henry is amazing, I'm never disappointed by her. The next book I read was a library book, which is very exciting. I signed up for a library near me, which offers ebooks, which was really important for me because I don't know how often I would actually get to this library physically, but I want to support a library to save my money and also to support the library. The first book I got from the library was a book called Heartstream by Tom Pollock, which I'd never heard before, but when I was browsing what was available, I saw this and it just sounded really intriguing. It's a young adult thriller set in the near future where technology has advanced so that you can essentially have a social media that you connect to your brain and you can live stream your real-time emotions to your followers so they are feeling whatever you're feeling in that moment. And we follow two perspectives. We follow a girl called Kat who with her best friend Evie are obsessed with this boy band. Think like One Direction level. But the twist here is that Kat, unknown to her best friend Evie, is actually dating one of the boys from the boy band. Our other perspective is a girl called Amy who uses the social media that I was talking about before to live stream her real-time feelings to her followers and she started doing this because her mother had a terminal illness and she just found that was a way for her to cope through the emotions of that and at the start of the book her mother has died and we are at the funeral and she is live streaming these emotions. That is just like the setup for it. I'm not going to go into too much of the plot because I don't want to give anything away. It has very Black Mirror vibes if Black Mirror was more for teenagers. It's not like too gruesome or too traumatizing or anything like Black Mirror can be. It's very much catered to a younger audience but it still has that kind of uneasy setting and this like new your future vibe of like a technology that could be and what would be the implications of that as well as what are the implications of like a power dynamic between a fan dating the person they are a fan of and parasocial relationships with people which are just all themes that are very very prevalent in today's society especially among young people who live a lot of their lives online forming parasocial relationships with influencers and celebrities. I rated this book 3.75. It was really strong I thought. The reasons I didn't rate it higher than 3.75 are probably just because I'm not a young adult. I think now that I'm looking back on it, maybe I would re rate it higher. I thought it was really well done, really strong, fast paced, enjoyable. For being in a reading rut this month actually, I think I read this book quite quickly. I would definitely recommend it to you if you like young adult fiction, if you like thrillers. Just go in with the, the mindset that it is young adult. I think I didn't fully know it was young adult when I started reading it and it's not that the writing comes across too much like that. It's just, I think if you enjoy thrillers, a part of you enjoys like a kind of level of darkness, which you're not going to get from this book. It's not to say it's not dark, it is, but it's not as dark as you may be used to. But it was really good. The characters are really strong. I thought the reveal of what was going on the whole time was really strong. I think the themes were executed really well. I just think it is a solid, solid book. The next book I got from the library as well, was really exciting because this was on my TBR a month or so ago. And this was Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. This book is another young adult book, but it's more of a horror than a thriller. And it follows a 16 year old trans boy named Benji who's on the run from the cult that raised him. Basically this book is set in a dystopian post-apocalyptic world where most of the population has been eradicated. And there are these monsters that have been born from this de destruction. Whilst Benji is on the run, he finds himself rescued by a group of teens from the local Atchison LGBTQ plus Center, which is known as the ALC and Benji joins this group to try and take down this cult while dealing with confusing feelings about his family, his fiance, a guy he's met at the ALC called Nick who is autistic and very good looking and who he starts to bond with. This was definitely one of the most unique books I've ever read. One of the most diverse books in terms of representation of queer characters, which was amazing. The horror in it was surprisingly horrific. It was very, very gory and disturbing for a young adult book. 
and it was kind of giving Annihilation vibes in that sense. The things I really enjoyed about this book were the culty vibes. I love reading fiction centred around cults. I find it so fascinating and so disturbing. I love the characters. I love the kind of found family aspect about it. And I loved the world that had been built. However, at times I found the world building a bit too confusing. I found myself feeling a bit lost about the lore of the world. I wish there had just been a little bit more time at the beginning setting out what had happened because we are really thrown into the plot. We're really expected to learn as you go, keep up, it's fast paced, fast moving. I think that's a good way for a book to be but for me personally I just would have liked a little, little bit more time at the beginning to kind of settle into what this world is and what was going on but this was really good and I would definitely read more from this author. I think read the trigger warnings before you go in because there's lots of difficult conversations and thoughts. There's some misgendering so it's just something to be aware of before going into it. The author does put a disclosure at the beginning though. The next book I read was Storm Child by Meg Robotham which is the fourth book in the Cyrus Haven series following Cyrus Haven, a psychologist who works with the police and Evie Cormack, his friend and housemate who has had a really troubling past. This book isn't out yet, I think it comes out this month but I read it through NetGalley so thank you so much to NetGalley and the publishers for letting me read this early. I gave this book three stars. It's definitely my least favourite in the series so far. This book starts with Cyrus and Evie on holiday at the beach when all of a sudden bodies start washing ashore and it's soon discovered that these are the bodies of immigrants who were crossing the channel on a boat that was crashed into. This event triggers Evie into a breakdown of sorts. She has to go to hospital and it kind of propels her and Cyrus into trying to find out what happened in her past, how she ended up in the UK, what happened to her mother and sister, along with trying to uncover a more sinister organisation at the heart of this boat being sunk in the channel. Obviously I really wanted to like this book because I love this series. I really wanted to like it as well because the themes it is tackling are very current in terms of refugees seeking asylum, how dangerous it is for them and how they are so vulnerable and at risk of being taken advantage of but they're in such desperate positions that they will do anything to just be safe. All of these things are so prevalent and important that I was excited to see what Michael Robotham could do with that. What I found was instead of the book focusing on the more current political climate, I was much more focused on Evie as a character and her trauma from her past, which is obviously still linked to those themes. But a part of me kind of feels like we are done with Evie's past trauma. Like the second book very much focused on it. second book was my favourite in the series so far and it's not that like we know now so she should just like move on and get over it but I kind of just wanted to see more of her being present in this book without it being about her as the victim. I wanted her to have more power. That being said, my favourite parts of the book were the sections where we were in Evie's past when she lived in Albania which is kind of contradictory my feelings about it but I thought those were the most interesting parts like finding out who she was when she was little before all the tra trauma happened. Also my favourite thing about this series is the relationship between Cyrus and Evie and in this book they do spend the most time together I think in the whole series but I don't think that their relationship moves anywhere that greatly and I want to see more development. I feel like we're we were told a lot about how they are feeling rather than shown. And also I'm just getting a bit tired as well of every book in this series having a different female love interest for Cyrus. I would really like just one of them to stick around. There's nothing wrong with each of the women. Florence in this book, I really liked her, but she is like the third or fourth in a string of women. <laughs> So I think that is just getting a bit repetitive for me. I still gave this three stars. I do really like his writing. It just, there was something about this one that just it wasn't hitting for me. It didn't grip me in the way that the previous books have gripped me. And then finally this month I read Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh, which I gave four stars. This book is really good and it's really short, which I really appreciate in a book. I really like a short book that just packs a punch. This book follows a woman called Elodie in the 1950s in a small village in France. She is married to a local baker and when a new couple from America arrive in the village she becomes a 
bit obsessed with both of them, particularly the wife and her lifestyle, to the point where she wants to be her, but also wants to be with her, but also wants to be with her husband as her, <laughs> and also wants to be both both of them. And so throughout this book, we are seeing her relationship with the wife evolve, the wife's called Violet, also her relationship with the husband, as well as seeing the relationship with her own husband, the baker, as she tries to be intimate with him, being rejected over and over again. We see her struggling in her romantic relationship and longing and longing for just physical and emotional contact with someone. And then meanwhile, also weird things are happening, like people killing themselves randomly and in very dramatic ways, and people just beginning to act really, really strangely. And we know that the village is kind of falling into this group mass hysteria. Due to what? We won't know until the end of the book. But we know that Elodie does survive it because the book is being told in present, looking back on what happened, as well as the events leading up to this outbreak of hysteria. I really like this book and also it's so interesting because this book is based on a true story about a case of mass hysteria in a village in France in the 1950s that people think was caused by a bad batch of bread. So Sophie McIntosh has taken this true event and used it to tell a story about a woman who is struggling in her marriage and is feeling so so alone and what that will drive someone to do and imagine and want. It was one of those books where the writing style is very like immersive and visceral and really wants you to feel what this character is feeling. I thought it was executed really really well. Sophie McIntosh has also written The Water Cure which I've heard of. I'm not sure what that book is about but I've heard of it but people are liking it. I don't know if it was my algorithm listening to me but I was recommended a TikTok the other day where someone was talking about The Water Cure so I think I will definitely check that out especially because I've just looked it up and it's mentioning cults. That is all the books I read in May. Definitely not my best reading month in terms of like the amount I read and how into the books I were. But if we look at what I was rating them, the lowest I rated was a three star and then all the rest were 3.75 and above. So in terms of what I was reading, I was reading books I was enjoying, but my reading slump just was getting the better of me. It was, I can't deny it. I hope you had a good May and that you are not suffering a reading slump like I am. I did do a fun book haul the other day from Waterstones. I bought three books which I'm so excited for each of them and I'm really hoping these are the books to cure me. They're all books that in my head I think could be five stars so fingers crossed. Please fingers crossed for me. I don't want to be like this anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.